let's light the sucker and meet the old broads. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 behind the scenes secrets about Hocus Pocus. You have no paws here, you fool! <laughs> Hollywood! Maybe not, Come here. but there's a power greater in your magic, and that's knowledge. For this list, we'll be looking at the most bewitching details about the making of this classic Halloween flick that will make your next rewatch extra special. What's the most magical Hocus Pocus secret you know? Don't be a basic witch, share them in the comments. Number 10. It started as a bedtime story. This cat here, Binks, right? He can talk. My brother's a virgin, he lit the black flame candle, the witches are back from the dead and they're after us. We need help. How much candy have you had, honey? Unless you were a fan of all things Halloween growing up, stories about evil, child-hungry witches and cursed cats probably weren't what you wanted to hear before Lights Out. However, for David Kirshner, a spooky bedtime story went on to inspire a cult classic. I'm really into witches. Really? Me too. We just learned about those sisters in school. Oh, you mean the Sanderson sisters? I know all about them. My mom used to run the museum. He conjured up the tale for his daughters that spotlighted his love for spooky season. And soon, a movie was born. While pitching the narrative to Disney, he transformed their meeting room into a Halloween spooktacular. Rooms were hanging from the ceiling, pictures of black cats were dotted around the room, and a 15-pound bag of candy corn sat on the table. They smelled October 31st. They smelled Halloween. Is it any wonder Disney was so keen to get on board? Number 9. Doug Jones brought Billy to life with improv. In a former life, Winifred Sanderson and Billy Butcherson were an item. And let's just say things didn't end on good terms. So when she brings him back from the dead to help carry out her evil scheme, he has a few choice words for his former flame. Wench. <gasps> Trollop. You buck-toothed mop right firefly from hell! According to actor Doug Jones, these weren't the words originally scripted for his grand return. After unsealing his mouth, he was meant to call Winifred something that rhymes with witch. Uh-oh. Sisters, did you hear what he called you? Jones didn't feel comfortable hurling that kind of language at Midler, and in a kid's movie, no less, so he changed it. Well, Billy did have to wait 300 years to deliver the perfect insult, and he nailed it. I've waited centuries to say that. I'll say what you want, just don't breathe on me. Number 8. Driving Stick broomstick. It's just a bunch of hocus pocus! Did you ever notice how the way each Sanderson sister rides her broomstick reflects her character? Winnie's quite vigorous, Mary's more guarded, and Sarah throws caution to the wind. This was carefully choreographed by Peggy Holmes, who had an interesting way to gauge the actress's household appliance riding styles. She joined each one on a car journey, examined how they drove, and incorporated it into their flying technique. And the coolest part is that they were actually flying. We fly! We fly! <laughs> On what? We fly! Okay, so Bette Midler, Kathy Jimmy, and Sarah Jessica Parker didn't magically develop flying skills, but it wasn't CGI either. Parker especially enjoyed getting hoisted into the air on a harness and would happily stay up there for ages. So I could fit an entire New York Times up the back of the corset, and I found that the the harness was comfortable, so I would just sit up there and read the times. Number 7. Leonardo DiCaprio was offered the part of Max. The Hocus Pocus cast couldn't have been more perfect, so it's almost unimaginable that in a parallel universe, the role of Max could have gone to Leonardo DiCaprio. You can dream of a moment for years and still somehow miss it when it comes. You've got to reach through the flames and take it. Or lose it forever. According to the actor, Disney offered him a large monetary sum to come on board. Director Kenny Ortega recalled being asked to meet with this relatively new actor, even though he wasn't available for the job. And I was like, it's okay, it's okay. I understand that, that I don't, you know, that you, I'm, we're not going to be able to invite you into this, but I, I just wanted to hang out with you. When he left, I called my casting directors and I was like, is there any way? Specifics aside, both accounts agree on the fact that DiCaprio was never actually involved in the project. Instead, he went on to star in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, which arguably launched his career, earning him his first Oscar and Golden Globe nominations. Whoa! I'm not gonna fall! Whoa! Number 6. You can still visit Allison's house. Unless you're a super-duper huge Hocus Pocus fan, you might not know that the movie was partially filmed in Salem. 
Must be a big change for you. Yeah, that's for sure. You don't like it here? Oh, the leaves are great, but I, I don't know. Just all this Halloween stuff. You can visit Pioneer Village, which set the tone for the movie at the beginning, or stop by the Old Town Hall, where the iconic Halloween party scene occurred. If you ever dreamt of attending a soiree at the Ropes Mansion, also known as the exterior of Allison's residence, good news, you can. Well, kind of. It's now part of the Peabody Essex Museum. Rich people. They're probably making string cider or bob for apples. While they probably don't host any raucous All Hallows Eve parties, you can still visit. In 2022, the museum resurrected the spirit of the 1993 cult classic with some festive decorations. It's going to be the first time the set has been exactly recreated since the movie was made in 1993. Just stay clear of any black flame candles. Max, no! Uh oh. Number 5 A Tale of Two Cats. At the start of the movie, we meet Thackeray Binks, a young man who's turned into a cat after failing to rescue his sister from the witches. He later helps Max, Allison, and Danny save Salem from their clutches. According to the latter, played by Thora Birch, it's true what they say about working with animals. I always wish that Sean had been around because Sean Murray, he played Binks uh, in, in, in real boy form. What, I've, what I discovered was that cats are impossible to train. You can't train cats. While the human Binks is indeed portrayed by NCIS's Sean Murray, the voice we hear actually belongs to Jason Marsden, aka Max from a Goofy movie. Danny, come on, please don't be sad for me. Binks, is that you? Yeah. Per Marsden, Murray's voice sounded too modern for a 300 or so year old feline. So instead, they asked him to dub the role, both human and cat, with a more era-appropriate inflection. You can talk. Yeah, no kidding. Now, get the spellbook. <laughs> Come on, move it! Number 4. The Sanderson sisters were originally the biggest stars. If the idea of life-sucking witches gave you nightmares as a kid, we hate to break it to you, but Hocus Pocus could have been much scarier. It's been great fun, but I, I guess I better be going. Ooh, stay for supper. <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm not hungry. Oh, but we are. As Kathy and Jimmy once revealed to Sci-Fi Wire, the film initially focused more on the Sanderson sisters than on the kids. She shared that what audiences saw was far from the movie they originally shot. Disney decided it needed to be more child-friendly and changed the vibe in post-production. You know, I always wanted a child, oh, no. and now I think I'll have one. Mm -hmm. I'm toast! Several deleted scenes spotlighted the witches and their antics, one of which can briefly be seen in the trailer. Even if they ultimately got less screen time, no one gives off more main character energy than the Sanderson sisters. We are home! Number three, production had a stringent budget. How many of us dreamt of dressing as a Sanderson sister for Halloween? I need one of those instant ice packs. You girls are giving me a fever. Yow. As designer Mary Vogt told Glamour, much thought and a lot of money went into creating outfits that reflected the characters' personalities. Mary's dress resembles a baker, Sarah's was modeled after Sleeping Beauty, and who else could inspire Winnie's outfit than the legendary Bette Midler herself? There's no costume design that could be bigger than her. She's kind of a Valkyrie. Yeah. Very much so, and she'll always come above whatever she's got on. However, this consumed much of the costume budget, so they got creative, using old Disney looks in some places and getting crafty in others. Max and Danny's mom's Madonna costume is a notable example. After all, the DIY look works for the plot, and it's undeniably epic. Well, you know, well, obviously, don't you think? We have to give credit where it's due. Even on a tight budget, Vogt's costumes are iconic. Number 2. Doug Jones released real moths from his mouth. As we've already discussed, the scene where Billy first speaks is pretty memorable. However, it's also a little gross since moths and dust fly out of his mouth. But you'd be mistaken if you thought this was some cool CGI trick. 
This is before the days of CG as we know it now. What is the year? So that meant if moths and dust have to fly out of my mouth, then we have to put moths and dust in my mouth to start with. Yep, that's right. The moths were real. The actor shared that he had a dental dam placed in his mouth with a latex covering and that the creatures were placed on it using tweezers. And I could feel this little, the, the, the flutter of them, and it was just like <laughs> harrowing. Unfortunately for Jones, a light broke during their first take, so they had to try again. Jones also filmed a dance number for a scene, but it was cut. An award just for his commitment to the role wouldn't be amiss. Move out of the way! Wait, 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 wait. no, no. A good zombie. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. A nod to Gypsy. We'll always let her entertain us. Hello, hello. My name's Wilfred. What's up? Hello, everybody. My name is Rob. What's yours? Satan's creepy relationship. Director Gary Marshall and his sister Penny cameo as a couple. Down, pudding face. Shove it, Satan. Oh, thou should not speak to master in such a manner. <laughs> they call me master. Wait till you see what I'm gonna call you. Everyone did their own singing. We can confirm that yes, those are Sarah Jessica Parker's dulcet tones. Come. Bette Midler's Ye Old Cursing Improv. Midler was reportedly committed to making sure her swears were era appropriate. I'll have your guts for God as God confound you! Tony Gardner released behind the scenes photos. The animatronic effects artist shared pics from his time on the Hocus Pocus set. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, I put a spell on you almost didn't make the cut. I put a spell on you. And now you're mine. We know this secret is pretty shocking, but it's true. David Kirshner didn't think a musical number would fit the film's overall tone, and felt that its inclusion would ruin the movie. However, you can't cast Bette Midler and not expect her to sing. In fact, this lively version of Jay Hawkins' classic tune was arranged for the actress by Mark Shaman. It also would have been wrong not to take full advantage of Kenny Ortega's far-reaching talents. If you don't believe, you'd better get superstitious. Great show. Indeed, it became the most legendary scene of the entire movie, and for good reason. In hindsight, Kirshner happily admits just how wrong he was. With its enchanting melody, party vibes, and star power, we're glad this number ultimately put a spell on him, too. agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.